Hey guys, Mike Morelli here from Peak Prosper. Welcome into today's episode, How Nature Helps You Grow a Business. Scott, what's up, brother? Yo, what's up, man? What a crazy episode topic, huh? How nature helps you grow a business. Yeah, this is going to be a fun one. And, and there's a lot to unpack here. Um, but I can't think of a better, because we last episode we were talking about your 50 mile trek through the Olympic uh, National <laughs> Forest or National Park, the rainforest there, and the power of the community that got you through that. And now we want to be talking about how nature actually, it actually helps you grow a business. It actually helps you turn those entrepreneurial dreams into a reality. So we're stoked on this one. Oh, well, let's kick it off, Mike. How does nature help you grow a business? So I think it's first important to talk about uh, how a lack of nature stagnates your business. And mm. when we when we are driven about something with maybe a business idea, business growth, I know for me that I began to neglect nature because it became obsessive, it became all consuming. And when that happened, I would just kind of wake up, start working and then just go all day. And then like five, like five, 6 PM, I'm just like burned out. And I just like want to take a cold shower and maybe meditate, eat dinner and go to bed. And I found myself going into that cycle. And the problem, the problem with that is that when I, when I became an entrepreneur, the fundamental reason on why I became an entrepreneur is to have more time in nature so that I could create my own schedule, have the freedom to, to do what I wanted when I wanted. If I wanted to take the morning off to go skiing or surfing, I just would. And it was very interesting that as soon as I became an entrepreneur, I did the complete total opposite. And as a result, my, I, my anxiety went up, my mental health suffered, right? I felt stressed out. I started freaking out about money all the time. And so I think it's important to start off with that first where the, the lack of intimacy with nature and the lack of developing that relationship actually hurt my business. And I can, and I'll explain why in just a moment, but Scott, for yourself, I mean, do you resonate with that story? hundred <laughs> percent. And oh, I, asked, I, I think that I used, the answer was yes, but I wanted to ask you because me and you have the same vision when we, you know, when we started peak together. Sure. And I think that I've gone through these multiple phases of my entrepreneurial journey where I'm living in this illusion and it's the entrepreneurial illusion of grind. And I, I, I fall prey to this trap thinking that, oh, if I grind harder, if I put in the hours, 10 hours, 12 hour days, 14 hours, if I work five days a week, six days, sometimes seven days a week, then I will be successful faster then I will have the freedom that I wanted, which was the underlying motivation for starting this business in the first place faster. Then I will have an abundance of money faster. But what all of that has ever gotten me when I fall into this entrepreneurial grind cycle is more stress, more anxiety, more symptoms of burnout. And inevitably the business suffers ultimately because when my health suffers, the business suffers. Simply put, when you are not living true to your nature, you suffer. And when your business is suffering, it's not because of a business problem. People have just have personal problems that reflect in their business. And I have to quote Sam Ovens there because I think it's a, it's a quote that I'll remember for the rest of my life. People don't have business problems. You have personal problems that reflect in your business. And that grind mentality is so destructive because we have people like Gary V blasting in our eardrums, go, go, go create all this content and throw it on, on like Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, uh, podcast, start a podcast, go Facebook groups, post on your Facebook wall, Instagram stories. Now it's Instagram reels. No one's telling you to actually get clarity. <laughs> no one's actually telling you to get clarity on what is the actual thing that makes you tick. This is why Scott and I, we talk about the natural operating state and how it's a fundamental part of our program, why we help guys identify their natural operating state. What is that? It's the place that you 
operate best at. It's what puts you in the flow state. It's where you're leveraging your natural skills, strengths, and abilities to do the things every day that bring you maximum satisfaction, fulfillment, and enjoyment. If you look at anyone that has ever done anything great, they're playing their own game. Albert Einstein wasn't trying to be Joan of Arc. He was being Albert Einstein. Jesus Christ was doing his own thing. Joan of Arc was doing her own thing. Martin Luther King Jr. was doing his own thing. Thomas Edison was doing his own thing. And Henry Ford, they were playing their own game. And they were, they were really maximizing what they were uniquely good and passionate about. I found that in my life, Scott, that every single time that I went against nature, I lost, right? Mm. Never in a battle between your mind and nature, back nature, because nature always wins. Only my mind has convinced me that I need to grind, right? I need to grind to make more money for the business growth and to scale. Where did I get that idea from? I get polluted from these entrepreneurial YouTube channels about you know, 10xing and, you know, hyper growth and, and all these leads coming in. But if you really think about it, what is the source of growth of a business? It's you, you are the you are the source of the business. And if you're not living true to your nature, and you're off chasing all these shiny objects, it's going to catch up with you. And it caught up with me so many times. So it's very funny, Scott, because I was looking back where the best month, or one of the best months that me and you have ever had at peak prosper, I was looking back to this, this was in the fall after we ran the, I think it was the Find Meaningful Work Challenge, or maybe it was right before that. Actually, it was maybe the Become the Man You're Meant to Be. The month after that, we had the best, one of the best, maybe the best month we've ever had in the business. And we both took vacations. We worked the least amount of hours that month. Do you remember that month? It was like October or November. Absolutely do. Yeah. Because we, we both hit this point where we were like, dude, what are we like? We were working like all so many hours and like frantic. And then, and then I was like, dude, I'm going to go surfing. And you're like, yeah, I'm going to go. Like, I think you went on like a hut trip in the back country. I don't know what you did. Or like you went on a hiking trip without with Alex or your friends. We both just like took like four or five days off each and the business like popped, you know what I mean? And, and, um, I think that's a funny way of, of nature saying like, Hey, you should be, you should be here. Not maybe, you know, not saying don't work at all in the business, but finding, finding that, um, finding those things that really maximize your, your human life value. Right. And for me, uh, I'll, I'll jump into this and what that looks like for me on a daily basis. But these are some of the most important things to understand. I can guarantee you, if you're listening to this right now, you will not be happy when you hit a million dollars. You'll have a million dollars, but if you're still working 12 hour days and you're grinding, it doesn't, it just simply doesn't matter. And I think the key is to actually find happiness on the process to the million dollars, right? Because if you carry happiness with you on your journey towards a million dollars, you will be happy when you have a million dollars. But if that money is made in misery, it will just bring more misery. Yep. Mike, you, you, um, you remind me of something that Dan Millman writes about in the law of spirit, which is a series of laws that he came up with. And one of them is the law of balance and that the way that nature works when our pendulum swings too far to one side, we've gone too heavy into business or too heavy into relationship or too heavy into some bad habits. Nature has no choice, but to swing you back in the other direction. And it, nature doesn't actually seek to bring you into perfect balance and harmony. For a while, it has to overcorrect you, right? So you look at like, for example, when you're trying to learn to brush your teeth with your left hand, which I'm kind of doing right now, everything feels like an exaggeration. It doesn't feel like this natural flow, like you're in your natural operating state because nature is swinging the pendulum so far to the left when you were so used to using the right, you know? Yeah, it's, it's very, very, very well said. Um, nature is a perfect system, right? And we have come from nature. We are nature and it's in our roots. It is our soul really, to be honest. And um, what are those things? If you're listening to this right now, what are those things for you that just ignite you, right? It doesn't, necessarily mean that you have to go out into the woods and roll around in the leaves and like hug trees right you know what i mean <laughs> but like what are those things that you would do in your life regardless of praise approval acceptance power or money 
when you start to to identify and cultivate these things, that's what it's looking like to get down to your natural operating state. That's just a simple question for you to take away today. What are the things that you do for the purity of what the thing is? Regardless of, like I was saying this on a group call last night, Scott, when you get to such, because fine was, again, I bring up fine again, because he's been extremely inspirational in the program, but he goes, yeah, like I'm at this point now with my with my biz of where I'm where I'm going when I'm reaching out for, to to get potential clients. He goes, if people say no, I just don't care because I love what I'm doing. <laughs> when you get to that place where quote unquote failure doesn't matter to you, then you found it because you're just doing something for the purity. Like, you know, peak prosper at this point. Like this, we didn't have to start this podcast, but we're just doing it because we wanted to do it. Right. We wanted to just go create value and share stories and, and, and share the wisdom and principles that actually helps people to get paid to do what they love. And so when you're at that place where you don't need money, you don't need people to say, hey, good job or need people's acceptance or approval. And you're doing things for the purity of the thing. Find those things out and cultivate them and watch your levels of of wisdom and an insight and different ways of thinking and just in. Uh, your internal energetics just go through the roof, literally just go through the roof. And I look at that with peak prosper, Scott, the, the, I don't want to say the less we've worked because it's not, it's not about hours per se, but the more that I feel like me and you have gone into like, Hey, we're missing this element of nature. Let's get back. At, let's, let's take the mornings off and ski and surf and train the body. And let's not miss sunsets right? Hey, work is at 4 p.m. And I'm, and I'm feeling to go outside and just stare at the sunset or go in the mountains on a walk with, you know, your wife or whatever. You just, you go because the soul is telling you to go do those things. But because I think it goes back to what you were saying with the balance and really having the awareness there. Hmm. Mike, I got a question for you dude, that's, that's coming to mind here. Go have, for it. have you, have you ever uh, put a blindfold on? Maybe you're sitting in a chair or I don't know. Have you ever put a blindfold on, bro? Um, I believe I've, I've, I've been blindfolded before. <laughs> or maybe you sleep with a sleep mask. I don't know. I do. I sleep with a, a sleep mask. Okay. So have you ever put your sleep mask on though and gone and walked around in the woods? No, but, but that sounds amazing. <laughs> you probably stumble and trip and walk into a tree or. Yeah. Maybe I've just, I was just thinking about in Costa Rica. If I did that, I'd just get bit by a snake. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be terrible, right? You're walking around with no vision. Yeah. And, and, and so many people that get lost in the wilderness, they go into the wilderness with no clear, really clear destination. They don't have mm. a clear map of how they're going to get there. And we see this so many times with guys that we speak with and people that come into our program, at least at the beginning stages of entrepreneurship, they lack that vision that's necessary to safely navigate the wilderness and get to where they want to be professionally. So Mike, if, if you were to just share maybe a couple of tips here, what would you suggest to somebody that's looking to really clarify their vision for their business or their professional future? Two things that I want you to really sit back and, and ask yourself how, how, how deeply intimate your relationship is with nature, right? And are you neglecting it? Like when's the last time that you really got in contact with the birds and the trees and the mountains and the surf and the ocean, and you really, really immersed yourself in it? You know, is that part of your life lacking right now? Because if you're in a place right now of just like confusion and frustration and self-doubt, Maybe, maybe go and spend some more time there and then meditate on this question. If you had two years left to live, how would you want to spend it? Like if you really sat down and answered that question, how would you ultimately want to spend the last two years of your life? Yeah. Go really put some effort into that. If you're in a place of like confusion and stress right now, go into, go into nature and then come back with a clear mind and really write that out. There are... There is no like, I think a lot of the time, Scott, when we have this idea, because two years ago I was starting my own business, I never knew I was going to be doing mindset coaching, right? Like I had no idea that I was going to be doing that. And here I am recording a podcast with you in Costa Rica and we have a full stack community and methodology and all these different things. 
I'm in Costa Rica. You're in Whitefish, Montana with your wife. Like, I, I just not one, I never thought I would be in Costa Rica, but two, like, I never thought I would have this here. The reason that happens is because we limit our ways of thinking. Right. And so if you write these things out and you find that you're just, you're still like in this cycle of self doubt, fear of failure, those aren't actually real things. It's the mind. Right. And this is why we, we do, we have such a power of mindset coaching here because ultimately your greatest problems are not going to be a lack of a, of a business idea or, you know, how to grow your business. It's going to be overcoming the self-doubt, the limited thinking, the lack of clarity, the lack of vision. So if that's you, just book a call with us. I mean, we'll put it down in the show notes. We'd love to just connect with you and help you out and see where you're at. Um, but if you, if, if that's something that right now you're like, oh, I'm not looking to, I'm not looking to book a call, then I would just go back and, and really meditate on the, on the questions. One, how, how deeply in, uh, how deep is your relationship right now with nature, right? Is that something that you feel like your soul is craving? If so, get back into it and answer the question. If you had two years left to live, how would you want to spend it? Because I'm rewriting that now, Scott. I, you know, two years ago, I wrote this out and I'm living it now, but now I'm, now I'm recalibrating for the next one. And I'm so excited to see where peak is going to be in two years because the impact is going to be massive. <laughs> Amazing, Mike. It's been it's been so great connecting with you on this episode today, and I've really enjoyed talking about the power of nature and how it impacts us professionally and from an entrepreneurial perspective. And uh, stoked for the next episode. Yeah, that was that was really fun, and um, you know, nature's nature and adventure is at the core of who we are at Peak, and it's at the core of who we are as humans. So yeah, always stoked to be talking about this episode and, and uh, we're talking about this topic today and yeah, brother. So it was a fun one. Cool. Yeah. Let's, let's call it a wrap. I'll just end us with one quote here. I think I don't remember who said this, but in nature, nothing happens fast, but everything seems to get done. So <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> wow. That is, that is truth. Beautiful. We'll, we'll end it with that. All righty. Peace guys. Cheers, guys.